Good morning, everyone, and welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. I'm your host, Thomas McNulty, and today's recommendation for reading and book collecting is the legendary Mickey Spillane. And boy, does this bring back a lot of memories, you know. And so uh, let me preface this with a little statement. You know, when I was pulling out the books and looking them over, it reminded me of other authors from that era, some of whom are forgotten, uh, such as, or nearly forgotten, such as Robert Nathan or McKinley Cantor. Does anybody out there remember McKinley Cantor? I mean, he was a Pulitzer Prize winning author. These are names uh, of authors that were as commonly known as Ernest Hemingway. We're talking about male authors, obviously, from that golden age of literature, you know. Uh, and McKinley Cantor and Robert Nathan and Mickey Spillane, these were names that everybody knew who they were. These books were widely read. Now, of the three, I've done an episode on Robert Nathan already. In this episode, we'll talk about Mickey Spillane. And McKinley Cantor is out there, too. We'll get to him perhaps in another episode. These these are names from what I refer to as Lost America. Really, uh, it's fascinating. You know, those, those fashions, those trends, those names, the style... The language, everything changes, and a lot of it's gone now. Every generation, you know, changes. And this goes way back. Now, Mickey Spillane was, you know, 19, 1918, 2006, I think. I was fortunate to meet him once, um, and that was a great experience. You know, I obviously, I talked about this before, and I only met him the once, and it was great, you know, uh, something I'll always recall. Uh, now, with Mickey, Mickey Spillane, you know, uh, wrote detective fiction, hard-boiled action thrillers. And I think his early work is his best, but everything he did throughout his life is worth looking at. So if you're interested in getting current editions, you know, I think these are still on the market. You can go to Amazon and get these compilations. And the first one, I, the Jury, My Gun is Quick and Vengeance is Mine, you get three novels in here. These are his early Mike Hammer novels. Um, and then the second volume follows up with One Lonely, One Lonely Night, The Big Kill, and Kiss Me Deadly. So I strongly encourage you to read read Mickey Splane if you haven't. This is hard-boiled detective fiction. These are thrillers. Um, now, when I was talking about Robert Nathan and McKinley Cantor, those are different voices, too. You know, these authors... They all came to the table with a different style, a different slant, a different way of doing things, a certain a certain uh, style or topics, themes, and images that they wanted to promote. McKinley Cantor, for example, uh, really covered the Civil War in some highly acclaimed novels. And then he, he did some other interesting things, too, so we'll talk about him. Mickey Splane pretty much kept it even with tough guy action heroes. The prose was excellent, high quality. I can't praise Mickey Spillane enough. Now, I want to talk about my introduction to Mickey Spillane, and while I'm talking, I'll hold up some books. First edition of The Girl Hunters, and here is Mickey Spillane on the back. What a great, great photograph of him. Uh, I do obviously collect Mickey Spillane. Are you surprised to hear that? <laughs> you know, I, this is what you got into, okay? When you... When you tapped onto this YouTube channel, you, you got a book collector as well as a reader. So as a child, I want to mention this because I think it's, it's interesting. At least it's interesting to me, uh, and I hope you'll find it interesting too. I was raised in a household where I was encouraged to pick up everything and anything I felt like reading. And I was instructed by my parents, if you have questions, no matter what it is, ask the question and we'll answer them. And you won't get in trouble for that. So, with that said, as a child, and I'll clean this up a little bit, you know, I would do exactly what I was told I could do. I would pick up whatever books were there. The Girl Hunters by Mickey Spillane was one of them. Uh, and other stuff, for example, my grandmother loved to read really saucy romance novels. And I would pick those up and uh, I had quite an education reading my grandmother's romance novels. Um, you know, this was during that era where literature opened up and there were no taboos, really. 
And uh, I did ask those questions. Uh, you can well imagine uh, what those conversations were like. I have distinctive memories of asking my mother certain questions at the dinner table with my father had a beer in his hand. And when I asked the question, which I will not repeat here, what is this? Because I read it in one of the books. Uh, and uh, my mother answered it diplomatically and my father was turned red and spit the beer out, you know, laughing. So uh, I would pick up anything and everything and I had an education that way. That, you know, and I, that's the way it was. I learned how to read. Ask questions if you don't understand something. Comprehend before judging. I've talked about that before. So Mickey Spillane was the only author my father read. Now my father read every week because he subscribed to different magazines and so forth. And he would read Popular Mechanics, Mechanics Illustrated and so forth. Uh, but Mickey Spillane was the only author where he would read the paperbacks, and it, it, this was it for him. Popular Mechanics, Mechanics Illustrated, my father was a, an inventor, a tinkerer, a mechanic, worked on cars and so forth. Uh, but Mickey Spillane, you know, and there's a lot of reasons for that, you know, the, <laughs> the covers are enticing, aren't they? We'll talk about man bait, what they call man bait paperbacks in a different episode. So I would read these old paperbacks. Mickey Spillane and you know I was fascinated by these because with Mickey Spillane you get what I call as I mentioned I think lost America and especially New York because my camera was based in New York so I'm also going to do an episode on post-war literature and we'll talk about Mickey Spillane again look at the picture of Spillane on the back of this isn't that fantastic uh, he was a tough guy you know he really was and here's a great one look at this so Mickey Spillane wrote about New York, and there's so many vivid images that come to mind in his <clears throat> Mike Hammer stories, especially the early ones. You know, the image of him walking through the rain with a fedora, the slouch hat, you know. And, of course, Mickey Spillane would go on to play Mike Hammer in the early 60s film version opposite the beautiful Shirley Eaton. I also met Shirley Eaton at a convention. And for those of you are wondering what that's all about, here is a lovely hint <laughs> at Shirley Eaton. Shirley Eaton is best known as the Golden Girl from Goldfinger opposite Sean Connery in the famous movie. But before that, she did. She, she played opposite Mickey Spillane as Mike Hammer. The Girl Hunters. The Girl Hunters was one of the later books. It's really good. So... You know, Mickey Spillane is out there, and I do encourage you to read him, especially if you're interested in, you know, hard-boiled fiction. Raymond Chandler. You know, there was Raymond Chandler, there was Hammett, and there was Ross McDonald, and then there was Mickey Spillane. Mickey Spillane is in a class by himself, you know, and, and uh, when I met him, and I'm just going to show you this, he signed the book to me. I, the Jury, was the first... One. This is one of the most famous books, I think, in American literature. And he wrote to me uh, on the back, Hi, Tom, this, go this, this goes way back, Mickey Spillane. So you can imagine I treasure these. I have a stack of books he signed for me. And, you know, when you pick this stuff up, Day of the Guns, you know, you're a collector, so you buy different editions. Day of the Guns. And he did different characters, too. He did, he did Tiger Man and... Morgan the Raider, okay, was another one. And, you know, it, this material is just old-fashioned, hard-boiled, tough guy. You know, flex, flex a bit there, you know. And, uh, there, you know, look at this <laughs> Bloody Sunrise. What a great book. And this was predominantly a male audience, unlike Robert Nathan, who appealed to men and women alike. And McKinley Cantor, you know, I think men and women alike read his books he did a lot of different things but Mickey Spillane was the men's market men's adventure paperback what they call sometimes they refer to as man bait paperbacks um, which is I think that's an un unfortunate distinction to be made here now you know the the different the different editions are out there usually with a pretty girl on the cover 
you get that type of thing. Um, the death dealers, the long wait. How about the twisted thing? You know, this is Mike Hammer, Mickey Spillane at it, at their best. You know, here's the death dealers. Here's the hardcover first edition. Here's Mickey Spillane in a bar with a blonde in New York. Uh, you know, and you know, it's it's Mickey Spillane. Come on, it's great stuff. Now. His career went on and on, you know, for a long time. And this must have been the 70s. Uh, he, he mixed it up a bit. And they couldn't get away with this today. You know, he put out the erection set. And, of course, the cover is pretty spicy. And that's his wife on the cover, who was a model, quite lovely. And you can imagine that this was a best-selling book. And then the last cop-out also featured his his wife on the cover and we should all be so lucky to have our wives on the cover of our books right and uh, Mickey Spillane good bless his heart you know for that one uh, and uh, these books are obviously they are now collectors items here's the paperback editions and you'll note that on the uh, the erection set it's actually an, it's not a pornography book they censored the paperback the hardcover is not censored but the paperback is um, these are men's adventure stories now the sexuality in these books is not explicit Mickey Spillane could write about uh, a romantic encounter let's say uh, and make it sound explicit without it actually being explicit uh, he was that good he could do pretty much anything he wanted but I think that he just loved hard-boiled tough guy fiction um, and, and he did it you know exclusively throughout his career so when you get a chance check out mickey mickey spillane one lonely night you know i don't think um feminists like these books uh there's a lot of um kiss me deadly the big kill you know there is so much to be said this is a double actually i i the jury and my gun is quick i think oh no this is vengeance is mine and it's advertising i the jury and my gun is quick you know these old paperbacks are fun to collect mickey spillane is is exciting to read the, the level of his writing the quality is very high again he describes he describes new york it's it's post-war america it was so enticing it was so different unlike obviously unlike anything we have today you couldn't get away with this because the society has it's become you know it's become a twisted thing perhaps mickey spillane would say uh you just couldn't do it uh i don't know maybe i'm wrong anyway I'm a big Mickey Spillane fan. Now, the good news here is the great Max Allen Collins has been keeping Mickey Spillane in print. Now, what Max is doing is Max Allen Collins, who is a writer on his own, you know, he did the, he does the Nathan Heller in the Quarry series. He's been doing those for a long time. They're excellent. He took some of Mickey Spillane's um, fragments, plots, and so forth, and he works with Mickey Spillane's wife and he has permission to do this and he's writing new Mike Hammer novels basically co-authoring them from uh, fragments left in plot outlines left by Mickey Spillane so we're lucky to have them I have one on pre-order right now that's coming out I think in a couple of months uh, Kiss Her Goodbye by Mickey Spillane and Max Allen Collins these are posthumous so Mickey Spillane is gone but Max Allen Collins is doing a superb job in keeping Mike Hammer novels out there, and they're really good. I, I think they're great. Highly unusual. I think it's historic that that's happening. There have been other historical fictional characters that are kept alive by other writers, um, but what Max Allen Collins has done, he's actually kept the flavor of it. Uh, you know, And it's to his credit that he can do that. Mickey Spillane and Mike Hammer, I don't think they'll ever die. So recently, Hard, Hard Case put out a comic book series. And this was fantastic, you know. Um, I think there is a uh, trade paperback version of this out there. So Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer, Max Allen Collins again, involved in that. So I really enjoyed that. And in addition to that, for you Western lovers out there, Max took one of the a screenplay that Mickey Spillane had done a, a rare western, 
uh, that he had done for John Wayne and that was never produced and Max Collins has turned it into a series. So here's the first one, The Legend of Caleb York. And then we have The Big Showdown and The Bloody Spur. I, there's another one coming, you know. So thank you, Max Allen Collins, for keeping some of these uh, characters going. That, for those of you who are fans of Mickey Spillane, uh, really fun material to read. You've heard me say that before, haven't you? And I just wanted to give a nod to Mickey Spillane. Look at that, the snake. It's great, great stuff. All right. As always, thank you for checking in to McNulty's Book Corral. Subscribe if you can remember to do so. I would appreciate that. And stay well, stay happy, feed your brain, read a book, and if you can, find Survival Zero and other great books by Mickey Spillane. Thanks. <laughs>